for your thread calculations when you calculate clearance drill sizes and tap drill sizes you need to work with the following geometric features on a thread and the good news is it's the same thread geometry for both the metric and the UTS threads okay they're both 60 degree threads with identical terminology and identical features so the first one would be well, on a thread you have a succession of these zigzags, okay? The zigs are crests. Uh, let's see, these are these would be crests there. And the zags would be there would be roots. Well, I'm just going to go just singular root and that's crest, okay? You have a succession of crests and roots and the surface of metal that you would be walking if you could fit into a root there. Say you're going up here. That's the flank on the thread, okay? I'm just gonna write it here. Flank. So you have root, crest, another flank. Sorry, you have root, flank, a crest, another flank, root, one more flank. You get to a crest, okay? You got the idea. So those are flanks. It's important to notice that the threads, the tops of the threads are not sharp. They don't cut and hurt your finger. That's not only a safety feature, that's an engineering feature on it. You can see that the... Uh, I know it's hard to see in your resolution on the camera, but you can see that the, the crests have a width that runs all the way around the thread, okay? It's it's rounded. You can see it's, it's rounded a little bit and that's consistent throughout. The same with the root. You can see that it's a trench with a bottom and the bottom has a certain width to it. You can see these trenches running there. It's got a width to it. It's not doesn't end in a sharp point, okay? Very important. And uh, as we have discussed before, the major diameter of a thread is measured from crest to crest. The minor diameter, the major, and the and the minor diameter of a thread is measured from root, from root to root. The nominal diameter of a thread that I haven't mentioned would be somewhere here. The, the nominal. It's somewhere up in the air, just a hair above, where the tips of the triangles would be if the crests weren't rounded, or the math word for it truncated. Look at this picture here. It's the same thread idea. You can see 60 degree thread, 60, 60 at the crest, 60 at the root. It's very nice even with 60. So you can see that there's a little bit of rounding there at the crest, a little bit of rounding at the bottom. There's a curvature to it. For the tab drill size and clearance thread calculations, I'm gonna ignore and omit those, okay? because it's, uh, it's possible to calculate, but uh, with such a small amount, it's going to be just omitted. What you do need to uh, concentrate on is that there is a little bit missing at the crest, due to this cre crest truncation, and a little bit of the thread's depth is missing at the root there due to the root truncation okay so the triangles are not sharp you see that's where the tip would be that's where nominal diameter is measured to to an imaginary or a theory point if the thread wasn't truncated and rounded so that's where nominal diameter runs to and this is the line where major diameter runs to 
and this is the line where minor diameter is measured to, from root to root. Okay? Now, what we do have here with these triangles is uh, equilateral triangles. This is the same idea. This would be crest, crest, root, root, and root. So this is your thread. I have an extra line here from crest to crest because the last feature that we need is pitch. I'm gonna go this way. That's thread pitch. That's part of your thread designation. Either from crest to crest or from root to root, it's the same thing. It's thread pitch. That's important. That's uh, not in this picture, but is in this one. So from here to here, that would be thread pitch. It's important. Now, in a thread designation like this, M20 by 2.5, the thread pitch is this number. It's given. It's 2.5 millimeters. This 20 is also in millimeters, is your nominal diameter. Now to calculate the amount of thread truncation here, that little bit that's missing, and to calculate the amount of root truncation that's missing there, the threads are, you can see on this picture, the threads have a couple of more, well not features, but the, uh, the numbers that you need are expressed in terms of height. Here, you can see everything relates to thread height. Nothing much that you need relates to thread pitch. You can also see P in the picture, that pitch going from root to root, and uh, there is a couple of more letter P's for pitch. Don't worry about them, you don't need them. What you do need is thread height, and thread height is, uh, has to be calculated. The amount of thread crest truncation is one-eighth of the thread's height, the theory height, from untruncated tip down to the uh, level where uh, major diameter is measured. Okay, so that's the difference between, that little bit of truncation is the, is the difference between the nominal diameter and the major diameter, and you have the same on the other side of that thread as well. So it's going to have to be doubled at one point, but for now, just, just stick with this one-eighth of the thread's height is missing there. Five-eighths is what's left here for a meat, because a quarter is missing here for root truncation. So from, from the untruncated triangle that would form a sharp trench there, it, it's, it's not there, it's also truncated away. You can see h over 4, a quarter of the height is truncated away there. So a quarter of the thread's height is 2 eighths, one quarter is the same as 2 eighths, so 2 eighths is missing there, 1 eighths is missing there, 2 eighths plus 1 eighths is 3 eighths, therefore that's why the remaining part is 5 eighths of the thread's depth. So, going back to this one, the I'm just going to change color. What we need, what we need is height, thread height, and the thread height runs here. My question is, if this one is a 60 degree triangle, what is the height of this triangle? If this one is a 60, 60, 60 equilateral triangle. I'll show you how this one's done. We need, we need height, but we don't have height. It has to be calculated, okay? What we do have is pitch. So we know that if this is an equilateral triangle, then uh, this is pitch, and equilateral triangle means uh, all sides are the same. So this one is the same length as this one is the same length. Sorry. Uh, is the same length as that one, okay? So the pitch. is just as long as the flank. Okay, that's very important to point out. And uh, we have here a right angle triangle that's calculable 
I'm just gonna run here with, I don't know, green. There, there, and there. That's the right angle triangle. That's the same everywhere, it repeats. Okay? We have here, now in this triangle, we have a 30 degree angle. We have here 2.5. Sorry, I'm just gonna fix that one. Two point five for the hypotenuse of that triangle, because now I'm replacing pitch and flank with traditional math class geometry terms. The height remains the height of the triangle or altitude of the triangle. It works either way, and this two and a half is the hypotenuse of the triangle, and we have an angle between the two of them. We have altitude, and that altitude just happens to be the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle. Well, the trigonometric function that has adjacent and hypotenuse in it is the cosine function. The cosine of any angle equals to, if you remember, socca to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means that cosine of an angle, well that angle actually is 30 degrees, equals the adjacent side or the altitude of the triangle over the hypotenuse, which hypotenuse is uh, 2.5. What you solve it for adjacent is fairly straightforward. You have to multiply that one with that one. So if you go cosine 30 times 2.5, you're going to get a number for the adjacent side. Now, the number for cosine cosine 30 is always, because that 30 degree angle doesn't change, it's 0 0.866. That's enough digit on that one. And, and that 2.5 was, remember, that was the pitch. So, if you, if you want to calculate the thread's height, which is the adjacent side in terms of school math, okay, that you're familiar with from middle school or high school, if you want the altitude or the adjacent side on this one, this would be cosine 30 times 2 and a half, okay? And uh, cosine 30 is 0 0.866. That 2 and a half, that was the pitch from the thread designation. So, to calculate the height, the full height of the triangle is 0 0.866 times the thread pitch. Whatever thread pitch you're actually working, it's going to work for any triangle. Once you have the height figured out, now you can divide what, once you have an amount for that. And in this case, it's 2.1. There's more digits to it, you can do it on a calculator. 2.1 millimeters. So that's 2.1 mils and that's 2.5 mils. I hope that makes sense in terms of trigonometry that the altitude of a triangle is shorter than the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse must be the longest side every time in a right angle triangle. If it's not right angle, there is no hypotenuse. If it was just the 60-60-60 triangle, equilateral, there's no hypotenuse. So, but with this one, the height now is 2.1. Now you can divide the height by 8 to calculate the amount of tr truncation there. You can divide the 2.1 by 4 to calculate the amount of root truncation. And what, am I, what amount you are left with, uh, that would be a, okay, that would be a bracket there. Uh, is the 5 eighths of the thread's height. You can calculate it by subtraction or you can calculate, once you have the height, multiply it by 5 and divide by 8. Either which way you like it. Now you can calculate the truncation amounts so you can <coughs> so you can go from nominal diameter 20 to actual diameter, major diameter. You can also calculate the root from the root to root minor diameter of the thread okay so this geometry 
is important for it.